Welcome to Rooted Cosmic Soul Storytime. Mutiny. Written and narrated by D.B. Vasquez. A serious storm raged outside. Wind, rain, and lightning danced with each other as water poured in through the cracks and crevices made by time and elemental force. As a consequence, a river flowed through the left side of her house. She grabbed towels and rags, lamenting the fact that now she'd have to call her energetically overwhelming and quite annoying landlord in the morning. In her house she stood, wringing out cold rainwater from a dozen towels. The rhythm and hum of the rain created a quiet and contemplative soundtrack that eased her out of her mind space and more into her spirit space. Her heart moved her in time and place, and she remembered that right now, in this very moment, someone, somewhere, was hiding from, or even perhaps cleaning up, not cold rain, water, but bullets, bombs, blood, and death. There was no reconciling the contradictions between her world and the world of many others. She leaned into gratitude and empathy. She fell asleep to the quarrel of a dryer spinning, feeling more densely heavy-hearted than usual. Her last conscious breaths and thoughts sent and held love, compassion, and grace to the peoples of the world suffering from this toxic and out-of-balance masculine construct. When she awoke, it was still dark, she was not in her bed, but in a shadowed and damp tunnel. Maybe I'm underground, she thought. How did I get underground? There was no light, but the rocked wall face glistened. Her nose hinted that her body lay in wet earth. Her hands felt blistered and cracked, her throat severely parched, her thoughts disoriented. As she pulled herself up, the energy above her swirled, the energy below her shifted, and the energy in her stabilized. In this trinity, clarity arrived. I am underground, and I am not. I am here, and I was here. I flowed, and I am flowing. Looking down, she saw draped across her shoulders what looked like an intricately sewn lavender guitar strap. She tugged at it, and instead of threads and leather, she felt feathers and sharp tips. She tried to make out what was hanging from this shoulder strap. Cloudy and murky, she felt it more than she could see it. She could not fully decipher nor discern what she was holding. It felt powerful and precise. Perhaps it was a weapon. Why am I carrying a weapon? She asked herself, and her voice echoed. She started walking down the tunnel, heart pounding, wanting to panic, but somehow knowing that's not a choice she wanted to make. She saw something peripherally and instinctively turned, holding the perhaps weapon up pointed and ready. She surprised herself with this action, this motion of being at the ready. The movements felt ingrained and normalized, and yet a part of herself didn't comprehend it. Whatever she thought she saw beside her was now gone. Her senses satiated, she kept walking. Eventually the tunnel opened into a beautiful old-growth redwood forest. As she stepped into the forest, everything else was eclipsed by a brilliantly bold full moon owning the night sky. She started to exhale in awe, and something in the shadows pulled her down. She heard, Where have you been hiding? Hypnotized by the moon's allure, with great difficulty she turned her gaze toward the voice, but saw no one. 
the moon continued to send moonbeams across the forest floor. They nipped at her toes, drawing her inward. She was having a hard time focusing. A part of her was still hiding, waiting. Then she heard the voice again. So what's our next move? They said we're supposed to cover the southwest. What? Her throat felt dry, and her what bounced off the redwoods, reverberating back at her. She had no idea what the hell the voices were talking about. Is the time now? Is tonight the night we let our spirits sing and our souls soar? I don't understand, she croaked out. She wanted to ask a thousand questions, but then noticed the glow seeping into the forest was not just moonbeams. Somewhere bombs were exploding. The noise grew closer and louder. The sounds of automatic weapons began hitting the air, echoing and filling every crevice it could find. Where are we? We're boxed. Break the box. Do we follow orders and go south? Do we stay asleep? Or do we refuse to obey and head north? Do we wake up? The command is yours. Remember, we trust you with our life. This is not our box. This is theirs. The moon shifted its beams. A fragmented memory began to coalesce. In the balance of light and shadow, she remembered, I am sovereign. This is an incursion, and I'm leading a mutiny. A mutiny against fear, harm, and disconnection. She looked down at her cracked and broken hands and thought, I should feel pain. I mean, these look painful. At that moment, she heard a loud booming that shook her from the inside out. She looked around. She was still alone except for moonbeams, earth, and noise. So much noise. If only I could make it all stop, she said, raising her head to the sky. It was then that it felt like she was holding in her hands the maybe weapon. She looked down and instead saw ink dripping from her fingertips. Ink was dripping from her fingertips. Her eyes then caught something written on the underside of the lavender guitar strap. She turned it over and saw three words. Transmute. The eye. Upon reading the words, her eyes twitched and tears ran south down her face. Her feet turned north and ran toward the harm, toward the disconnection, toward the fear. With her choice made and her body moving forward, she looked up. Etched in the night sky, the stars twinkled the words, Break the box. In the waking world, the storm outside raged on. Rain and wind battled her bedroom windows ferociously. She awoke startled, heart pounding, and out of breath. This time she was not in a tunnel, but on a soft bed, groping in the dark for something to hold on to. The dream just dreamt, sinking in. She jumped up to find something to write with. Finding a pen, she gripped it. And in return, a familiar feeling of being at the ready gripped her. She shivered and looked down at her hands, remembering their cracked, blistering, and broken state. And she began to write anyway. In the silence of the night, she heard the same voice from her dream, realizing it was her own. Over and over she was saying, Choice change course choice change course choice change course
This is Rudy Cosmic Soul Story Time. High vibration storytelling for the ascending, awakening soul. <laughs> 